Good evening, good evening, everyone. Good evening, it's good to see you on here. It's that time of the day again, where I come your way. My name is Eric Amwaka and it's African Art Talk Shows with Eric. A time when we get to learn about everything African art. So I'll give myself a few moments just to share this, uh, this wonderful video, and I'll urge all of you who join as well to just shout out, give a comment in the comment box, and I'll give you a shout out as well as share this message and invite everyone on board to come and join us. So I'll put the music back on whilst I share this message. Hey, 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 welcome back. So on this show is all about African art, African art, African art. And I do my best to bring on this show very successful African artists, good friends of mine, for us just to talk about art, to discuss everything from their processes, from how they create, for to their exhibitions, to their challenges, and everything in between. But on this show, we also seek to educate we talk about our history. We talk about what is going on on the African continent. And in terms of education, I'll talk about this thing. There's something called the Edinkra symbol. And today we'll be learning simply about the Edinkra symbol. But before then, let me show you this quotation, a quotation that really caught my mind. And it's from a good old um, Afri a Pan-African called Marcus Gavi. And what he says is that, a people without the knowledge of their history or their past histories, their origin and culture is like a tree without roots. That's interesting, isn't it? A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. And talking about that, it means we need to educate ourselves. It means we need to know our history. We need to know our culture. We need to know where we came from and where we're going. That will guide us in knowing where we're going. And talking about education, as I said, we'll be learning about the Adinkra symbols, Adinkra symbols. Now we've got about 146 of these symbols in the Akan, um, Akan tribe, in the Ashanti kingdom. And these things communicate with us. I'll tell you a little bit of history about this. So the Adinkra symbol originates from the people of the Bono region, Bono region of German, these are people from Ghana, the Akan Kingdom. And these are design symbols that were named after the king himself. At that time, in 1810 to 1820, there was a king called Nana Kojo Ajman Edinkra. And he designed these symbols. And he named the symbols after himself. So creativity back in the 1810s was still there, inherited the Africans, and even well before then. Now, 
The Adinkra symbol is used for our clothing, for, uh, for the kings. Those days, it was only the kings that could wear clothing with the Adinkra symbols on it. But as time went on, the craft grew. And when the Ashantis conquered the, the Bono people, they actually forced them to teach them how to use the Adinkra symbol. And therefore, back in the days, the son of the king at that time called Apel was actually forced to teach the Ashantis how to draw these Adinkra symbols and use them on their clothing. The symbol has a decorative function, but it also represents objects that encapsulate innovative messages. You know, if you have codes in the traditional Ashanti system, this is where you actually communicate through. These symbols will help you communicate. They actually portray our wisdom and aspects of our life and our environment. So today, the one that I want us to learn from is this one, this symbol on the screen, and it's called Ji Nyami, which translates to English as except God or except for God. Ji Nyami is except God. Now, Jinyame is a symbol, as we said, from Ghana, from the Akan tribe, and it means except God. And it is a beautiful and uniquely uh, crafted symbol where Ghanaians use it on their clothing. These days, it's become so popular that you have them even on T-shirts, you have them on, let's say, um, any pottery, you have them on so many decorations. But it depicts the religious aspects of the Ghanaian individual. So that is it. That is a bit of history right there. That is us learning about our African history. And every single week, I'll bring a different symbol for us to learn about. Because as Marcus Gabi said, you need to know your history to know where you're going. So that is it. Welcome aboard, everyone. Welcome to the show. And uh, I'll just give shout out to those who have joined. Morel Lotello says, hey, guys. And I'll put it right there. So... Morel, thanks for joining us. And anybody else who's joined us, just say hello to us and we will make sure that we have a good time this evening. The person that I have brought to the show today is a very good friend of mine. He is a very good international artist and I'll read a little bit of his bio for you to get to know him even before he comes on. His name is Oluwole Omofemi and he is an international artist. And an international artist whose work has been exhibited almost everywhere in the world. I'll mention a few places. He's exhibited in Lagos, in Nigeria, Italy, Belgium, Ghana, and quite recently, just in March, he exhibited in London. So I'm just, before I bring him on screen, I'd like you to see his video of him at the studio and see how he does his work. Isn't it so beautiful? Well, it's amazing. And without much ado, I'm just going to bring him on right now. Hi, Olu. How are you doing? Hello, Eric. How are you doing? I'm fine. Right. I'm doing so great. It's good to finally actually get you to appear on this show. And I'm so grateful that you honored our show this time round. Wow. It's the second episode. And why not bring one of the prominent artists in the globe of uh, in the globe from the continent of Africa? So, everybody, just give him a shout out. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'd like you to just in the comment box give him a um, shout, tell him whatever you want to tell him to make him feel welcome to the show. As I said earlier last week, this show is to educate, 
I'm just going to make it a free talk for artists to show us even their studios. And as you can see from behind him, he is right in his studio. How cool is that? So, Olu, welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank you very much. Great, great, great. So, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Who is Olu? If I meet you in the streets or I see your beautiful actress in London, for instance, how would I know who Olu yeah. is? Well, thank you very much, Eric. Uh, Olu Wale Omofemi is a visual artist uh, from Nigeria. Uh, I'm a painter who enjoys using uh, right. oil and acrylic as a media of expression. Uh, I'm married. Okay. And, and God has blessed us with a boy. Oh, it's like eight months old now. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Wow. And so that's just the basic thing about me for now. That's just the that's basic right. thing for now. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you did mention right now that you've got a family. And um, I just eight months. So I believe that you must be quite busy, isn't it? A busy dad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Honestly. <laughs> And obviously, that, that comes with these challenges, isn't it? Um, combining, yeah, yeah. let's say, your, your art practice with being a father. Yeah, yeah well, it, being a father is not, you know, it's not an easy thing. You know, yes. basically, when I, I do say, you know, marriage is very tasky. You know, there, right. are, there are a lot of things that are involved in marriage. Yes. And, uh, and marriage is also demanded too. But immediately, right. you have a child or a daughter. You know, yes. everything, your focus, your attention shifts towards, you know, your son or your daughter. So immediately, it does, we, isn't it? We have, yeah, immediately we have uh, the, the boy, you know, everything about me change, you know, my thinking, my perspective about life. I, you know, okay. I can't just make I can't just make decision on my own without putting some things into consideration. So a lot Definitely. of things have, you know, really changed about me. The way I see life and the way I, you know, I I paint at times, you know. So because okay. everything comes together to to my boy Tommy, so that's it. That's true. Oh, his name is Tommy as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah name is Tommy. <laughs> and I, I think it puts everything into perspective, isn't it? It makes you understand life a bit more, and yeah, you appreciate better. life as soon as the boy comes. Yeah. Great, yeah. great, great. So tell us a bit about, you know, your, your growing up when you were little. Um, how come you actually, have you always been an artist is the question? Or did you have well, any that, inspiration think, to look up to something, someone? Well, that, 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 that's a very good question. You know, uh, I, I remember then, if I could remember, I think I started, you know, art generally. You know, probably okay. when I was like four or five years old, you know. Wow. Where I could draw on the wall, put some sketches on sketch pad, and even I get, I try to, you know, save some money yes. that my my mom gives me then, you know, to take to the school. I try to save part of it and to okay. buy some drawing books or buy some drawing materials that yeah. will help my creativity. Uh, but basically, while I was growing up, I grew up with my grandfather. Okay. You know, uh, my grandfather wanted me, you know, to become an electrician. Are you yeah, serious? He, <laughs> yeah, seriously. He wanted me to become an electrician, you know, because I don't know, I don't know his view or something. Because then I was, I was naive, you know, yes, yes, doing yes. what I know how to do best. That's you know, right. Doing some sketches and creating some artwork from cans, cardboard, and other things like that. So uh, I started doing this, you know. None of my parents there, you know, were okay. encouraging. Because yes. Probably because they were not, you know, exposed to the art or because of the level of civilization then. You know, oh, yes. They had, they, have, they had different, you know, mindset for me. Yes. They had different plans for me entirely. My dad wanted me to go into more professional work, like becoming a lawyer or a medical doctor or something like that. But my Tell grandfather, because <laughs> I, yeah, my grandfather is, I would say, is one of uh, my inspirations today. Okay. Okay. He's still alive. Okay. He's, he's very close to hundred. You know, wow. he's still alive, doing fine, doing you know. And uh, I remember when I was growing up with him, 
uh, is very supporting, very encouraging. Okay. That's good. And uh, okay. he taught me many things about life. You mm -hmm. know, he taught me the goods, you know, making the right decision. Yes. I remember one of the things he told me that when I was growing up that, well, when it is time for you to get married, don't look at outward appearance. True. Look beyond True. that because things mm -hmm. like this will eventually fade away. Yes. And I remember one of yeah. those things he told me then that only when any any time you want to get married, don't mm -hmm. settle for less. Marry the person <laughs> that you know that's that's a good family, a good yeah. culture, and things like that. And these are part of those things that that really helped me better in life in making decisions and approaching life, and which I quite appreciate for you know for my life. So these are the things I learned. I've learned a lot of things from him. But why growing up as an artist was not an easy thing for me because there were a lot of challenges then. Yes. Because my papa and my mama was not in support of what I was doing, you know, doing art, you know. They never believed that could, you know, feed. I, I can imagine. My yeah, I can so imagine. They, that you know, I was in the same soup as you, where, yeah. you know, <laughs> parents, parents of our time, they just wanted us to be either an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, the you know, the traditional subjects. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So I, my dad, my grandfather was always just, you know, watching me closely, right. looking at what I was doing. And, you know, I was doing that without even thinking of what I would become. But the truth mm. is that as long as I was doing that, I have, you know, people in my neighborhood who okay. were very okay. encouraging to me, you know, who encouraged wow. me a lot that, Wally, what you are doing, if you have the opportunity to travel out, ne I, was, I never had anything in mind. I was just doing hard. Just doing what God had given you. Without even yeah, and I was just doing that without even thinking of <laughs> if I want to travel, if I want to exhibit, if I want to do other things like that. So I, there yeah. was a lady, now she lives in South Africa. You know, she okay. came to me, she has this, you know, this fair complexion, and she yeah. has, you know, she has some family in Europe. She That's usually right. comes to me and tells me that, Wally, Wally, if you, what you are doing, if you have a point to travel out, you will become this, you become my it will be huge. you become this and that, you know? But, yeah. And I was just like, okay, let me just keep doing this. And during my secondary school then, things were very hard and rough for me mm -hmm. then because I could remember that I, after my secondary, after my school, after the closing half, yeah. I would go to, you know, go to uh, marketplace to hawk and That's even right. sell, help people to buy beer and wow. do some hawking in the streets just to wow. some money to, you know, to buy some art materials. You know, That's so right. these are part of my story that uh, I, uh, I quite appreciate. You know, for yes. what God has, you know, yeah. brought yeah. out from all the things I've passed through. You know, these are the, you know, the, the good I, thing know. with what you've said is that you stay focused. Even when you were hawking and you had beer on your head, selling beer, you still yeah. stayed very selling focused. Selling beer, helping people, selling rice, selling sweets sell in the street. Ah, my goodness. Yeah. So things were ah. very hard then. But, but the truth is that for once, I never, you know, lose my focus of being an artist. You know, so as I was growing older, a lot yeah. of things changed about me, you know. Uh, uh, I met some people while I was growing up. I saw some paintings that, you know, that really inspired me. I met some artists, you know, that okay. I share my feelings with. And we, we, we do talk. And so these are part of those people. These are part of the things that really shaped me yes. to who I am yes. today. Yeah. So, but you know, growing up as an artist in the brown roof of Ibadan was not an easy thing. You know, I can imagine. There were a lot of, and as you can, as you can all people. see, Oluwami is in his studio. He's got people behind yeah. him, so it's a studio setting which I like because that is what we would like to yeah. see how you actually live your day-to-day -day life. So we're not just okay. going to get you somewhere in a in a in a TV studio or somewhere. We just want you to be in your daily setting with your, let's say, assistants or your friends behind you, basically. And, yeah, if you want them to come into the interview, feel free, let them say a word or two. <laughs> okay, okay. I have a lot of them around here. I have oh, do you? In front of me. Okay. So, basically, in your in your studio, is it is it like a group? You have a group of artists in one studio. Is that the case? Well, uh, one of the... Uh, in my studio, I have a lot of people who come to learn the basic, okay. you know, Wow. So I have a lot of them that come. I have both male and female. You know? That's right. Some of them work with different, you know, 
media yeah so yes. you know some of them work with different mediums to express how they feel but one of the things is that like i do tell each one of them that you can't learn art art is in you everything you have you need to become an artist just, you, just, you can just you can only learn the basic just just the basic thing you know yes. about her, but you can't the art the creativity is in you already it's already so in I you just teach them the basic thing and i allow them to you know to explore and think for themselves yeah I, I I like I like what you've just said. Art is exactly. already in you. You know, when God created you, He put creativity in you already. So it's up to you to discover yeah. what is in you and just share it with the rest yeah. of the world. Keep going as you did. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, you what? You know, one. Well, I, there's one thing I do tell people. You know, like I do tell people, like I'm a, I'm not a Christian nor a Muslim. Yes. And you know, and people ask me, why do you say such? So? I tell them that since I've been reading the Bible, there's no place in the Bible that the Bible was stated that Christ was a Christian yeah. or a Muslim. So the only he, he thing was that bright. Christ brought was to preach love. You know, That's he said, love it. your neighbor. Yeah, preach love. Love your neighbor. Do this. It was for once he never talked about religion or something. The only thing the, the Christ was preaching was you know to preach love and tell people love your neighbor. When you do this to this, you have done this. To me. And I tell people. In the process of creation, you know, yes. I believe personally as an artist that they were already made artists in heaven, which I'm part of it, which you oh, are yes. part of them. Definitely. You know, God said, Come, let's so God said, Come, let's create man in our own image. That's it. In that context, God was not talking to carpenters, he was not talking no. to bricklayers. No. He was actually talking to ready made artists that were in That's heaven. Correct. Because he said, That's Come, correct. let's create man in our own image. So they were ready made artists in heaven who help you know God. In, in molding, in the creation. In detailing, in, in creation of other things. And that's why I tell people, when you when you meet people, you don't just get attracted to everybody. It's not possible. Oh, yes. You can find that's out that some people might not even get, you know, you might not even get any connection with some people. And you that's might even correct. meet someone for the first time. And you yes. just find that something, you feel something inside of you. And I tell people, when you feel that thing, probably in the process of creation, it's spiritual end, Probably you, you are have connected. done something. Yeah, you are connected somehow, somehow. Probably you did some detailing. As an artist, yeah. maybe you've done something in that. You've done some little, little touches in that. After the whole thing, God came and prayed. Do you know, do you know what? I love, I love the perspective from which you brought this discussion. Seriously, from that spiritual standpoint, that when mm -hmm. God said, let us create man in our own image, he had already... Yeah. Uh, craft people, artists already there. Yes, artists and then, already there. They are, we are there. Yes. And as joint heads, we all co-created with God. And it's very important as artists to understand the spiritual realm. We are not saying yeah. you have to be a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim yeah, yeah, to understand yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, Just yeah. be that you are a spiritual being having a human experience. Yeah. Sure, and sure, therefore, sure, you are sure. a co-creator with God. That's powerful. I, li I like the deep uh, area that you've taken us into. I like it. Yeah. That's great. So yeah, basically, uh, let's go. Let's go towards your childhood. And you said that you know. I remember when I was little. I from the age of six, uh, as far as I can remember, it was around six years that I knew that draw I could paint. And I don't even have any colors. Um, I found a watercolor on on a rubbish from somewhere, and I picked it up. And I took it home and started practicing. And that's when I knew that I could draw. I could draw even for my school mates and you know we used to have michael jackson postcards i could draw everything on it and i realized that i had the talent so i developed it i didn't i didn't wait so as you were saying that you drew on the ground same here we didn't have enough resources when we were growing up so yeah. the challenges of the african child as an artist is real yeah yeah it is real yeah. isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. that's right very real very very Definitely. real very real you know, very real, you know, things. But then, but then, what, what, yeah. Yeah. What, what will you say to encourage, you know, young Africans who are coming up, who are facing similar challenges as both of us faced? Well, uh, what, the only encouragement I, I will give to them is, you know, number one, staying focused. Mm. And it's one of, it's one of the most important things. If you really want to succeed in art, if you really yes. want to become, you know, if you really want to succeed and if you really want to go far, not fast, you know, there's a difference between okay. going fast and not going far in life. 
a lot of artists the difference have between, emerged. You know, I, I normally stop going, artists I'm interviewing to say, I want to tweet what you've just said. There's a difference between yeah. going fast and then going far. And going far, yeah. That's right. You can go That's fast, right. but not going far in life, which is very important. So as an artist, yes. you, you must have that at the back of your mind, you know, to always have this, this ideology of, you know, going far, not going fast. And if you That's really right. want to go fast in life, if you really want to go far in life, you need mm -hmm. people around you. You need people That's around true. you. But if That's you want true. to go fast, just go alone. Just go That's alone. It. That's you a need perfect... people who, who, who share your dreams, who believe in what you do, who can yes. encourage you, who can criticize in a, in a beautiful manner. You know, who That's can right. tell you, okay, this is where you need to improve. This is where you need to add this to. You know, you need people around you. So you really you're talking about co constructive life. criticism. Yeah. That's so it. you need That's that in it. life. You really want to go there. You need people around you. You need people that share your dream. You need people that believe in you as an individual. Mm. So that's, mm. that's a very important advice. And thank you for bringing us there because a lot of people think that, you know, if you want to go alone, you'll be more successful than the person who is pulling everyone no, 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 along with them. No, 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 no. It doesn't you you, work can, that you can go alone and reach a certain point, but you wouldn't have any roots. Yeah. And one of the one of the things is that doing all this, you know, being determined. And one of the things is that being honest to yourself. It's also mm. one of the most important key for an artist okay. to do well in life. You have to be honest to yourself. Yes. In the sense of, you know, being yourself will help you to discover who you really are. Okay. I can't be Eric overnight. It's not possible. Eric cannot not be at all. Me. It's not and possible. I cannot be a local God has created us. Yeah. So God has created us differently with a different yes. and unique talent. That's Everybody right. has that thing in them. Yes. But it, the, the point of, you know, getting to the point of saying, okay, I want to be this, I want to be that. That's when the problem lies. And that's when the problem occurs. So that's by true. doing this, by being true to yourself, it's going to yes. help you to make some decisions, some drastic decisions. Mm -hmm. While I was, yes. why if an artist, if a young artist is growing, growing up, it's good, you know, to to be influenced by some certain people, you know, by some some artists, you know, getting some influence from them. And after all this thing, all this knowledge that you have acquired, it's mm -hmm. good, you know, for an artist to think and look within and say, okay, what do I want to do? How do I create this thing? And one of the most important things is that also is that an artist, you know, uh, must be also a, must be able, you know, to also pay the sacrifice. Mm. Being an artist, it's not possible for you to just wake up overnight and you want to become successful. True. It's not possible. There are a lot it's of sacrifice, possible. commitment, you know, yeah. prayer, all other things. These Everything. are the things that will come together and more than form who you to who you are which is so very, to our listeners who are listening to us Oluwole uh, has got some really good advice for us uh, there are sacrifices that you have to go through as an artist you have to yes. commit to what you're doing you have to be yourself be true to yourself yeah. and as you can see yeah. from his t-shirt he says being an artist it's being it's not he didn't just get there it's a process it's a verb, yes. I-N-G, being an artist. So he, he is still going through the process. I am still going through the process. Till I'm yeah. called back to heaven, yeah. I will always go through a process. And we need people to come along with us. You cannot go as an island. You cannot be on yeah. your own. You need to have people yeah. with you. So I'm going to show a few pictures of you in your studio working. And then you can talk us through what you're doing there. So bear with me as I bring these pictures up. Uh, okay. That's the first one. Can you talk us through what well, you the, normally the, the go first, through before you paint? Yeah. Uh, what I the, the first thing is, you know, conceiving an idea. Okay. Which is one of the things I do. And uh in my studio here, there's there are different words, yes. And once an idea drops into my head, I yes. try to write it on the wall, not to forget. Anything, anything right. that comes to my mind. I try to put it down, try to jot it down. I may not have the proper interpretation of what, you know, what came to me. The only what came to you, drop yes. an idea. Yeah, the only street might drop an idea into my head. That's right. I might not have the full interpretation of the idea at the initial yeah. stage. But what I yeah. do is that I will try and put it down, jot it somewhere. 
Then after That's that, right. what I do is that I look for people around me. I try to look for people that can interpret that idea that has been given to me by the Holy Spirit. I try ah. to look for people around me to, yeah, yeah, to interpret such idea for me. So what I do is that I try to go out, to mingle with people, and try okay. to look for people. And immediately, I, immediately, I, immediately, I see someone that fits to what I have in mind. Yes. I approach them and tell them that, hello, my name is so 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 so. I would like to have you as a friend. I'm an artist, okay. if you don't mind. I would like you to come to my studio and see some of the things I'm doing. And That's when it. he or she comes around, I try to make him or her my friend. We talk together and share my basic, you know, yes. basic process with him or her. Then after that, I try to approach, approach her. Okay, hello, can you do this for me? I have so-so idea. Then after that, he might decide to charge me or tell me to, you know, do it for being a friend or something. But most of my model I use are probably people I know very well, people I'm okay. more close with, you know. I try to paint their story too in my painting. I can't ah. I don't just pick a picture and paint. I try to, okay. you know, ask some questions. Who are you? What are the challenges you face in life? What are the yeah. things? What are the things that you know that contributed to your growth in life? So these are the things that helps me when I'm painting. So anytime I'm painting, I try to put all these things I've heard from them. I try to put them in my head and I try to approach their painting. So at times, at the process of painting, the picture, you know, might not exactly look like, you know, what the picture, the, the photograph I took look like. True. But at the long run, I try to capture their essence as an artist, not the outward, the beauty. I try to put, you know, I try to interpret them, you know, the way I see them. The way so you that's see one them. one of the things uh, that, you know, occurs, yeah. So I try to interpret them the way I, you know, from their story that I've heard and other things, the other things they've said to me. So I try to paint them the way I see them, not the way they see themselves. That makes a lot of sense to me. That makes a lot of sense to me. So I've got, I've got this one on screen. Can you talk us about, about the two ladies over there and then the one on the right hand side where there's a, an old person with a, a child over there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, this, uh, this, uh, the two lady backing each other is called uh, the title is uh ejire which means twin in uh, okay. in uh yeah in africa oh it's interesting uh, I, I can see their faces are very similar isn't it once you mentioned twins yeah i can yeah, see that yeah, yeah their faces yeah. are quite similar yeah different yeah so uh i try to you know uh uh talk more of you know how africa generally in this you know, Western part, we always believe that, you know, when you have uh, a twin, yes. they should always think alike. They should behave the same way. They, mm -hmm. should, they, should, they, should, they should think. They should respond yeah. to situation from the same point of view, which is, right. not always, which is not always true. You know, you might have twins, a boy and a girl. You know, when okay. they're growing up, you can decide for them. You can tell them, hello, this is what I want you to do. Hey, this That's is right. what I want to do without even questioning. But it got without to a point in their life, yeah, where they will question your, you know, your your authority. They will ask mm. questions. Daddy, why do you want us to do this? No, I can't do this. No. That's correct. What? Yeah, so these are the things I try to, you know, portray in this uh, particular piece of two ladies backing each other. Backing yeah. each other is that, you know, they have different... They have different mindsets, different yes. views, different personalities, yes. different beliefs as, yes. as a twin. You know, it's not um, having them as a twin does not really guarantee, you know, that they will the end up doing the same thing in life. They will end up getting married the same day. They will end up building house the same day. At the long run, one might even, you know, die before the other. So these are the True. things I try to, you know, True. portray in this particular piece. And this and other think, one here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just just before you go to the other one, you know, in their pattern, in their clothing, they are even different, isn't yeah. it? Even though they are twins, yes, yes, normally yes, normally yes. twins wear the same clothing, but these people are wearing yes, uh, yes. different clothing. Yeah, different. Yeah, but they still have the same pattern, beautiful colors on their That's clothes. Right. But you know, yeah, but their mind, their thinking, their personality is I like quite that. their weight are not of each other. Yes. Now this yes. this particular one here is uh I title it uh early lesson for tomorrow. 
Okay. Now, this particular painting was inspired by my grandfather. That's my grandfather sitting close. Oh, are you to serious? A boy there. Yeah. <laughs> That's my grandfather now, and he's still alive wow. today. So uh, this painting was inspired by, you know, by my upbringing. Okay. With, you know, the uh, the life I lived with my grandfather while I was growing up. Yes. Because I could remember then when I was in primary school then, he would wake up early in the morning, bath, you know, take me to the bathroom and, you know, take proper go care of me and try to yes. make sure that everything is okay for me. So and he is this type that, you know, believes in God. He reads Bible almost all the time. And yes. then there's a, there's a black and white television there. I remember when I was growing up with my grandfather, we only have one black and white television in our house then. That was the black oh, television. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, so that black and white, you know, there's no color. Everything is just mm. black and white. And so and that, that was the only television. And I remember then when I was growing up, uh, my grandfather, you know, put a print of Mona Lisa in our room okay. there. I never knew what it meant, you know. I, I just knew that, okay, this thing is normal for this mm. person to put. But when I was growing up, I now asked, ah, Baba, why do you do this? Said because he to love her and I love good thing in her. That means if Baba had had money with him, then he would have loved, you know, to buy the original Mona Lisa. So I tried to yeah, put some me. of those things, you know, some of those things in our house, some of those things I saw while I was growing yeah. up. The little boy there was one of my, you know, one of my uh, kid brother. So I tried to use him, you know, to, 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 to show my relationship, the connection I had with my grandfather, which is still there to the day. We still talk, we see, we see chat. That's right. We see chat, we see chat, we still have a lot of things as a grandfather. And he still advise me to see today. Oh, so, does he? The, yeah, so the painting is basically talking about the relationship, you know, I I have with my grandfather while I was growing up. The relationship that's a beautiful one. That, that's yeah. a beautiful one. So, that is, yeah. so your your grandfather, and I'll put the picture back down again. I can see that he's got a very your your signature is to do with the hairstyle, isn't it? I can see yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Afro type hairstyle. Tell us about it a bit a bit about it. I'll show you this one as well. Well, okay. Well. The the Afro the Afro was you know was actually inspired by my ex girlfriend then okay the girl I was supposed to get married to yeah you know oh uh, I loved her I I did a lot of things okay you know, for her to stay yeah uh, you know she she owns a salon then she owns a salon you know yeah and she's doing you know doing well and there was a time everything just stopped. And okay. I went to a shop one day. I went to a shop one day and, you know, uh, I discovered that there were no, nobody was in the salon with her. Right. And I asked her, hello, what is going on? And uh, she, she said, people are not coming to the salon again. You know, oh, that people okay. are keeping their natural hair. I said, why? Why would people do this? You have invested a lot of money in this salon. So you should, it, should, it should be the time for you to, you know, to start ripping start, yes. everything you sow. And she That's said, true. Yeah, and she said, people are not coming. I said, okay, no problem. And I went back home. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, you know, mm -hmm. an idea came to my mind. Yes. And I prayed about it. I said, God, just expand this in my head. Mm -hmm. I know this is a mm -hmm. very big idea. Let me just put something in my mind. Mm -hmm. And before I started all this, I have this series of kids i normally paint i love painting children you know i love painting children old women that was okay. what i started with them yes so, uh after that i just went back home and the holy spirit was you know developing the idea in my in my mind yeah and i told myself uh, this is the time to do something new i pray and you know i decided to That's read about came. afro afro okay. here and you know the afro here is uh, to is to me and to Africa is number one thing is a symbol of identity. Definitely, you know? it definitely, and it, it helps also to promote our cultural value too, as an Africa. Yes. And you know, one of the things I've learned about the Afro so far is that you know, God has created we the black in a different and a dynamic way, which is quite different from the white. God has you couldn't have said it better. No, no, are different. Only, yeah, they always. Yeah, they always feel, you know, in their mind or something that they are superior to us. 
But I will tell you that that is the honest life so far. I've oh, had. Yes. When oh, yes. a when a white man start, you know, wants to com compete with the black. And let me give let me give you the analysis of the hair. You know that okay. the hair, the hair that got, the hair, you know, when you look at it from the spirit, from the, the biblical point of view, the yes. hair was a symbol of power. That's right. When you look at what happened to Samson, and, Samson and it still is, isn't it? Our hair is our power. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Samson lost, you know, immediately the hair was cut off. He lost yes. his power. And then you right. know, the enemy was able to attack. And one of yes. the one of the one of the one of the significance of here is that your hair is also an antenna that connects you to the spiritual realm. It's an antenna. True. True. Every yeah. every device has an antenna, isn't it? And normally the yeah, antenna yeah, is not yeah, at every the bottom. Phone, everything. Yeah, the it's always at, at the top. top. It's always at yeah, the top. At the top. That's yeah, right. that connects you. To, yeah, that connects you to the spiritual realm. There yeah. was a time I asked myself. There was a time I asked myself a question. You know that if a black man or a white woman, a, a black mm -hmm. man or a black lady, you know, yes. comb is or her head. Do mm -hmm. you know that the hair will always rise up, no matter what? But when you compare it to when you compare it to a white man, when a white lady or a white man. Comb is why it will always fall down. It falls. That's it the falls. Power. Yeah, it falls. And God has That's given right. the black the power, you know, to rule and control the Definitely. world. Definitely. Definitely. Black is Definitely. beautiful. Black is, you know, black is uh black is gold. Let me put it down too. Black and is gold. Yes, I, yeah, yeah, black is gold black too. Is gold. Yeah. Yeah. Black you know is what, gold. what you're saying? You know, we, we should be very proud that we are black. A lot of black people look oh. down upon themselves. And I'm like, how can you? You've got melanin. You are created in the image of God Almighty. You are so unique that your color radiates when the sun shines on you. How can not, you not be proud of it? And you, you know, you know that uh, all this thing, you know, I remember then when I was, when I was, I, I do make, you know, reference to my grandfather. Oh, yes. You know, while I was growing up with him, they have this natural helmet that they okay. use naturally to prevent right. their skin from cracking, from you know, yes. from damaging. But it, it, immediately the the black, you know, got in contact with, you know, the white. The white, we yes. forgot who we are. We forgot our identity and what we, we have. We forgot to embrace our, what we had as a as, as a black. Yes. We forgot our culture. We forgot our our identity. That's you right. Know? We try to embrace. You know the new white things. way, yeah, new things yeah. now. So you know where, where the ladies like, started perming their hair. Even the men, you, back yeah. in the day, started using jerry curls. Using a lot of things now. Huh? So it's one of those things I try to you know to preach to say in mm. my painting too. I try to paint a black woman with a black color too. That's I it. try to tell the woman too to appreciate who they are. Your beauty, you are beautiful. Black is beautiful. Yes. Black is you know black is gold. Black That's is right. everything. Black is everything. Black is Black everything. Black is everything. So they should they should always embrace who they are, embrace their color, love like a self love. Yes. They should love who they are. Love, so are love their kids, love their shape, love everything yes, that comes with the black now, woman and the black man. Everything, everything. That's very you important. Can, you know, and so these are the things that people need to start looking into. We start looking inwardly. We start looking, you know, looking at who we are now. We should forget the white, you know, I want to be this, I want to be that. You are beautiful, you are beautifully created in your own way. That's beautiful. It. That's yeah. right. So there's a comment from Marek Kofigani. Hi, Marek. Good afternoon to you. Marek says, and I'm going to read it right now. I'll take up okay. this whilst I read it. Marek says that some really interesting conversation. We don't value art that much, and we miss the fact that art is the highest form of captured history. That is really yeah. now for those of you who don't know Marek, Marek is a presidential aspirant for Ghana for 2020. Wow. It's a presidential wow. aspirant independent candidate candidate. He doesn't belong to any political party, okay. he's an independent presidential aspirant for the 2020 election in Ghana. So his point of view okay. really matters to us. And matters to me, matters to everyone in Ghana. He is saying that some really interesting conversation. We don't value yeah, art much. Value. And we yeah. miss the fact 
that art is the highest form of captured history. That's exactly right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's right, he's right. Because, right. you know, uh, he's right in the sense that when you come to Natural uh, History Museum in London, for instance, their history mm -hmm. has been preserved through art. When you have the manuscript, you have the books and everything, the next thing mm -hmm. is the drawings. To be able to tell your story, you tell it through the drawings that the artists captured in those days. You remember like Turner and Van Gogh and Picasso yeah. and all those people, they were able to present how they lived in those days and how they saw life. Even their fashion, the way they dressed, is all captured in their paintings. So as artists and as Africans, this is exactly what we need to do as Afri Africans to capture our way of life, to capture our way of living. So there we go. There we go. Thanks, Marit. There's another comment from, and I'll take it from uh, Muriel. Muriel says, that is such a thoughtful observation, which has its cultural pendant. Most of the dark goddesses in world religions are orchestrated. And there's a three dots over there. Probably she wrote more, but I can only read as that's far. So there we go. People are responding that we need to celebrate and embrace our blackness. Yes. Definitely, definitely. And that is what you beautifully captured in these artworks. The next question is, you know, we've been in pandemic for quite some time. How have you dealt with your art practice? And in some countries had quarantine, there was lockdown. I think there was lockdown in Nigeria as well as in Ghana. How yeah. did you deal with your art practice? Well, uh, I try to, one of the things that I do is that I have two studios. I have one at my home. Okay. I have one outside, you know. Uh, I only do probably small, small works at home too. Yes. But if I want to paint a big canvas, I come straight to my studio. And my studio from my house is like 20 to 25 minutes drive. Oh, that's, that's very convenient, work. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I try to, you know, this uh, lockdown of a thing has really helped me, you know, to think better. And do mm. some research. It has really, you know, artist life has always been a, a, a kind of, you know, lockdown. Honestly, from the beginning, you know, artists will be in a place for like two weeks, three weeks. Artists can even feel more comfortable without even going out. You know, it has been a lifestyle of artists too. You know oh, what yes. I'm So these are the things. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, being a, like me and I, uh, there are some things I do that other artists cannot do. Uh -huh. I paint where people are. I can. I have the opportunity. I can paint where I have people around me. But some artists cannot even do that. You know, some of I, I remember when when I was starting up, I couldn't do that. When people were around me, I was a bit um, a bit nervous. But then I had to train myself to be able to paint in the presence of people, and that's a good mm -hmm. skill to have as well. Because people want to see the process, isn't it? They want to see you actually yeah. applying the oil or the acrylic to the canvas. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really good skill to gather. Yeah. So it's just it's just like a normal thing to me. That's just but mm -hmm. some of the challenges mm -hmm. I faced was you know, you know getting some materials. You know, because everywhere yes. was locked down, there was no place to get some materials. I was only that's using true. some of the ones I have left with me. That was the only challenges I have. But you know, this lockdown has really, you know, you know, given me, you know, time to think and meditate on some certain things, you know. Yeah, and, and it's that, also that's... giving me time, you know, to spend with my family too. Oh yes, yeah, to spend oh yes, with my definitely. Family too very, very much my... needed. Yeah, so I yeah. yeah, very much needed. You know, um, mm -hmm. you talked about meditation. What was the importance of an artist being silent to meditate and get ideas? How important is it? Well, it's you know, it's very, very important. Most especially mm. for those, you know. Those who are not yet married is very, very important. You know, once you get married, a lot of things change about you. A lot of oh, yeah. things, you know, a lot. I could remember before I got married, you know, I was doing normal. I could wake up. I could start to anytime sleep in the studio without even going. Anytime I can decide anything. <laughs> I can say, okay, today I want to go to Ghana without even thinking of other oh, yeah. things. But now that I have family, you know, a lot of things have changed about me. I can't yes. just make decisions on my own. I can't just do some certain things on my own. So a lot of things are, but it's always good when an artist have a quiet time, you know, once in a while, you know, 
At times, I can to. park my car in a place and trek for like 20, 25 minutes. I move around and try to see Indeed. people, you know, talk to people and, you know. At times, I go to club to hear some people, you know. Hear right. them talking and, let, yeah, I do some of those And things. gather so information. This time, you know, information. So it forced me, you know, to do some, some things that I want to do. So okay. I enjoy that, but it's always good for an artist to, you know, go out, you know. At times, once in a while, you know, relax your brain. Go to a place where you can, you know, where there's nobody. At times, like, you can even... And, and to connect place. to the spirit, isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. Connect to your spirit being. That's really important. So as artists, if anyone is learning, the young ones who are coming up, it's important yeah. to really be silent sometimes. Be At with time, yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And just connect and, with the know, spirit being. Uh, and one of the things I will also tell the young artists too is, you know, to 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 take their whatever they are doing, they should always yes. take it serious. They okay. should always take it serious. Like for me, I don't play with work. I don't play with painting. I don't That's have right. time for anything. I don't have time. Yeah. Once I get to my studio in the morning, I leave in the evening. I don't have That's time it. to, you know, go to club. Most of artists these days are some of them are lazy. Yeah, yes. I can say that. Yes. Yeah, yes. they are lazy. They want That's they true. want a magic. The and they want the fame, isn't it? Yeah, they want the fame easily. Yeah. If like I remember when I got back from London, a lot of people were asking, ah, I said, ah, I've been in this thing for a very long time. For a very long time. It doesn't move you. All, all the consistency over the time. There was there was there, there, there were times that I I know I failed. I knew that I failed. There were times mm. that I even knew that things were changing, you know. Nobody to tell that to, but I keep doing, you know. Yeah. I keep doing and doing. I remember then, you know, when I started, my father lives in the US. Okay. My father, my dad, I yeah. he is the, I would say he's the he's the best father in the world. My dad Great. He is the best father, you know, he's very caring, very loving, you know. I like that. He's everything, he's everything to me, you know. He also has taught me many things. I remember mm. that when I started that, when I told my dad that dad, he would say, uh uh, who will buy this thing? Who will buy this from you? <laughs> what are you doing? There was a yeah. time he even told me, he even told me that I had to go and learn nursing. Now you I was just laughing at you. I was just laughing. I said, Dad, have you ever have you ever seen that trait of being a, a person that you know know knows how to you know take care of people? Did I, yeah. you, have you ever sit me down and ask me that, Dad, Wally, can you do this? He just told me that I should go and learn nursing. Just I go and learn nursing. Yeah. 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 Go and learn nursing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. After so my you, first you... leg, after my first leg vision, I told him. I showed okay. him, I made a video call, you know, to see some of my paintings that were sold. It was just like, yeah. eh? So can someone pay such <laughs> a month for this kind of painting? You know, and he has been in the U.S. for a very long time. It was just like, can someone pay so much a month for this painting? I said, for this they painting. can pay. Now, yeah. do you know what my dad is doing now? He is, he is my manager now. He wants to manage me because, yeah, now, because when I told him I was going to U.K. for an exhibition, Initially, okay. he never believed. He never believed me. He, do, he thought it was just a normal thing. I told him That's that right. these people are inviting me for an exhibition. He said, I'm "There you go." Going yes. to London to exhibit to tell the world yes. that this is what they do. I said, "I'm going." Immediately, they gave me the visa. I showed him. It was just like, "Ah, he now. will be so surprised." He said, yeah, he said, "Now I'm going to be your manager." He has been reading a lot of books. Seriously, he has been reading a lot of. You know, you know, you know. Our parents, our parents are quite funny sometimes, isn't it? Now he'll say, Oh, now look at my son, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's honest, he's so proud. He's a proud father oh, now. You know, it, it's good. You know, the, the thing is that we as artists have to prove ourselves as well, isn't it? No yeah, parents yeah. will just sit down for you to waste your time. So they'll like to see how serious you are as well. Yeah. And also I also remember, you know, that there, there's this I do talk to some of my collectors, you know. Okay. When when I when the poster came out for my exhibition in London. I yes. send it to some of my collectors to see. And, you know, right. most of the collectors these days, most of them, at times, they buy work based on gambling. You know, yes. okay, if I find this artist's work, you know, would this yes. artist grow? True. Would this artist grow? What will happen to this artist in the next five, ten years? In the next five years. Yes, so, what will happen talk, to him? Talking about London, if I pause yeah. you right there, I'm just going to show you a catalog that was shown okay. in London. And this yeah. was, was it, remind me, was it in March 2020? Yeah, March, March, uh, March, March 2020. 11. Yeah, yeah, March, March 11. 11. So I'm just going to yeah. show some of your work. Look at the beautiful work that uh, you presented. 
And can you talk us through? These are quite big paintings, isn't it? 140 by 120 centimeters. Yes. These are yes. big, yes. big ones. Yeah. 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 So yes. how 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 did you arrange for first of all? How did you get in touch with this gallery to exhibit, or did they approach you? Well, uh, the the gallery uh, is signature gallery. They That's have, right. The, the 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 manager, the owner is uh, Mr. Aka Rama. Okay. You know, Aka is one of you know Mr. Aka has yes. really helped you know help a lot of artists in Nigeria and other part of the country too. Mr. Yes. Aka is a, a kind of gallery owner, a collector, you know, yes. that sees beyond, you know, putting paint on canvas, putting pencil on canvas. Okay. He's a type that I always want to bring out the best in you. I immediately yes. see a potential is in you. Mm -hmm. He would try as much as possible, you know, to yes. encourage you, to help you do better in life. You yes. know, which after my first solo exhibition, I, I remember when I first met Mr. Aka, I thought mm -hmm. he was, you know, he was this man that is wicked. Oh, yeah. The one that, yeah, I thought he's a wicked man because the first time I showed him my painting then, I remember like maybe uh, 10 years ago, I showed okay. him my painting. He said, wow, the paintings are lovely, but this painting are not meant for me. You know, after that, I went back home. I thought, you know, my belief was that this person, I need to, I need to appeal to this person. This person must True. like what I do. It yes. was like what I do. And I went back home. I did some research and he brought another painting. He said, oh, you have not gotten there. You still need to try more. You still need to die. The third time I came back again, you know, this is the power of consistency. You know, over so this the is consistency I, and perseverance. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I came back again and I showed him, said, okay, now you are good. And he bought one painting from me. Since okay. then, I've not been going to him. And after, after my first solo exhibition, uh, yeah. he saw some of the paintings I exhibited in one gallery in Lagos. And he said, and he bought some painting from me. He bought them outrightly. And wow. he, then he has been encouraging me. He has been giving me some ideas, some That's things right. that, okay, you can do this, you can do that, you can do that. And after that, he proposed, you know, an exhibition. Okay. That, okay, we need to take this to London. We need to show London. We need to yes. show them that this is what we have in Africa. We need to do this. And, you know, everything started. And the gallery in London is being managed by his son in London. So All right, okay. They did, yeah, so they did everything, you know. It was it was successful. God has been faithful, you know. That everything went well and there was no problem. And, you know, I have them to thank, you know, for doing, you know, oh, yes. for, for putting such exhibition, for telling the world that this is what this guy have, you know, is, you know, is something that, you know, is, is worthwhile. So, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And, and I'll say congratulations to you as well. Looking at Thank these you. beautiful paintings, these are Thank huge you. paintings. And I, one thing I like is your color palette. You know, your color palette is like the old masters. Did you have anyone teaching you art when you were growing up? Did you have any mentor? Well, uh, while I was growing up, uh, there were a lot of artists that inspired me so far. Uh, one of them, is, uh, there's an artist in Ibado. His name is okay. Tokwe Fatumbi. He was okay. the first artist I met then. You know, right. it was the first artist I met. Then he took me as his friend. He, I do go to his studio. We do have yes. time to talk and chat. Then after then, I I met one of uh, the great, uh, one of the best Nigerian artists, a figure painter. His name is uh, Akiola Ebeniza. You know, I know I know Akiola. Those, He's on my Facebook yeah, as well. Yeah, so he was one of those artists, you know, that okay. inspired me so far because he played a very vital and good role in my life in terms of you know shaping me to who i am today so it's yes. one of those artists then i have some other people too that i look up to like uh papa olaku mr olaku too is one of those artists that i look up to every day i have yes. the like of Shekma, yes, son, you know uh tolu aliki uh yeah. benga of four and so on and so forth so these are the artists that inspired me locally but when we talk about internationally I, there's this artist that I love so much. I love Gustavo Clint. He's one of Gustav, those artists yes. that, yeah, it's, I love him. I love what he does as an artist. And, you know, these are the things that has really helped me so far in life. And, you That's know, right. I also learned too from my friend too. 
I learn from them. I try to. And then let's let, let's let's them. talk about this one because it's good to learn. I think one advice that I'm taking from what you're saying, and for all those who are watching, is that as an artist, you must have people that you're looking up to. You must have people that you're learning from. It doesn't yeah. mean you're copying them, but you have inspiration from them, no, no, no. and you have guidance have them, from yeah. them as well. Because as we initially said, the journey of success cannot be pursued alone. You have to have people with you. Okay. That's right. Yes. So on this one, yes. it's more contemporary as compared to the previous mm -hmm. ones where it's like the old masters. You've got bright colors in there and you've got text in there. Can you talk about this one? The title is called In Her. Well, in Her in her is a painting that was inspired by my grandmother. Wow. Was one of the things I do personally is that I most of the painting I paint are my stories. True. Most of, this, most of the painting I paint are some of the things that have happened to me, some of the okay. things I'm going through at the moment, some of the, you know, some of the, some of the setbacks, some of the luck, some of the love I've, you know, feel from family, friends, and other things like that. So in art yeah. was, you know, was a painting that was inspired by my grandmother. My right. grandmother now is late. Before she died, she had a cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had a uh, ovarian cancer or something. You know, oh dear. and she had to undergo this chemotherapy, mm -hmm. you know, and after that, she she loses all her hair, almost everything. Her hair was falling down. You know, she could not help it. And uh -huh. this grandmother I'm talking about is someone who is loving, who is caring. I always mm -hmm. see her as more God. I always see her as more God. She's loving. You could see some caption at the back, like hope. Aspiration, even to the point there was a there was there's a caption there that I wrote die today. Even when we took wow. there was a time we took her, there was a time we took her to the hospital. And the doctor okay. told her that your grandma was going to die in the next few three weeks because of the wow. thing. this the, the chemo that she took has damaged yes. some, some of our vital organs in our body. So those, those of you die. looking, I'm, I'm putting the case on that note that he said at the top left hand corner. The text yeah. says die today, and that's what he's talking yeah. about. Yeah. So the doctor said your grandmother does not have much time that in we should just prepare our mind that anytime she's mm. going to die. You mm. know, this you know came as a shock and you know it broke my heart that ah it's too early for this woman to leave us at this point that we need that most. And you know that she she died uh four days before my wife gave birth. Like four days wow. after, she was actually wow. with it because there was a time she was going through pain, you know, every day, crying, yes. and you know, I believe that she was actually waiting for my wife to deliver. Deliver. And, you know, when she died, she died, and the four days later, my wife delivered a a boy. You know, so that's amazing. He, he, so he, 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 she was not there for us to you know, she was not there for us to take care of the baby, to do yes. other things like that. So. The story behind, you know, the caption at the back is some of the things I see in her. Some of mm. the things I mm. loved about mm. her. Some of the things I look up to in her. So you could that's see true. a small crown there. There is a crown there. I and then there's a queen. Crown. That's on the that's on the yeah, top queen. right hand side corner. Yeah, there's a queen there. There's aspiration there. There's a determination. She's this type that she she never gives up easily. Okay. Whatever she wants to achieve. She always put her mind and everything to, to whatever she wants to do. So anything, anything she set aside as a goal, she always mm. try as much as possible, you know, to achieve this. So in her, it's all about the incident that surrounds, you know, my grandmother and that the love amazing. I have for her. Yeah. That is amazing. That is amazing. And this was painted in 2019. That was yes. in 2019. Late 2019. And then this one, you know, the series that you did, this one is called, um, is it EG? EG, wind. Okay. I can see that, you know, the hair is telling a story. You've got different, different ones that you, I showed earlier. And in all of them, the hair is telling a story. Can you tell us about why you've chosen to express yourself in this manner? Well, if, if you look at the hair very well, the hair looks more like a branch. That's right. Like a branch, like... It's like a tree. Goes, yeah, like a tree. And this is the body. This is the tree. This is the, this is the body of the tree there. The, the, yeah. the figure there. 
And in, basically in this painting, I try to, you know, talks about, you know, the difficulties of life. You mm -hmm. know, there's always ups and downs in life. Yes. Since we're not going to go smooth in life, there'll be a time where, you know, there's a time for cry. There's a time for celebration. There's That's a right. time for loneliness. Not everybody around you will be with you forever. Not That's everybody. True. That's true. Nobody you, we are not guaranteed. So nothing is nothing is starting. Yes. Nothing is starting in life. So it's basically talking about the incident of you know things around life. That's great. That's great. Beautiful paintings that you presented. Um, there's this one as well, very contemporary. The shape of the hair is like a box, uh, it's rectangular in shape. Can you tell us a bit about it as well? Well, this the the shape of the head is you know what is actually inspired by you know the way we African people carve our hair. We okay. can carve it in a rectangular form, square, yes. circle, and you know, and some of these things are some of the things I'm seeing every day, whereby mm. people are trying to go back to the old fashion, you know, going back to what our grandfather, our grandmother has done. So trying to bring it back to this contemporary. Era now. So I try to show, you know, some of those how we used things. to be. Yeah, how we used to be then. Try to bring That's it true. back to this, you know, limelight. And and I like the fact that we as Africans must now embrace who we are in its entirety. We must not just bleach our skin, perm our hair, or anything. Let's go back to who we were created to be: the black African with the melanin, with the hairstyles, everything. Yeah. Let's take it on. I think this is the right time for, you know, people to go back. It is just the right time for people to start, you know, embracing who we yeah. are. I can't, I can't be a white man over now. It's not possible. No, no, no. God we we don't want to be. God created me to be a black. That's right. Yeah, God who has created me to be a black man, he has his own reason. Oh, yes. And he has his own, you know, understanding of how and why he has created me to be black. Mm. I appreciate mm. who I am as a black. And I'm Definitely. proud to be a black. I'm Definitely. proud to be a black man. I can say it anyway. There was a question someone <laughs> asked me when I went to London. He said, "Hey, Femi, why do you paint? Why do you paint black?" I said, "Because I'm black." Because you're black. That was, yeah. How yeah, can now. you represent? Yeah. How can you represent <laughs> your 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 fellow beings in a different light, other than being you know painting them black? Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a few comments. And then we'll come back and tell our story. There are um, interesting comments going on in the background. And uh, we've, we've had one from Morel who says, the story is so true, Wally. So that's uh, Morel, feedback from Morel. Uh, Moses, a friend of mine, says so true as well. So everyone is so much in agreement with what you were saying. And there's this comment from Marek Kofigani who says that, as a young boy in school at all level, I chose the science route, but also did art as a personal option subject. That's interesting to know. And then plus 20 years later, I find out that the two people, uh, uh, the two people helped develop both hemispheres of the brain. So these two, art and science, they develop both sides of the brain. Sadly, yeah, yeah. we culturally, yeah, we culturally paint art as a profession for losers. We need more Afrocentric exhibitions to correct this. It needs to happen now. And I agree with him because I also, even as an artist, when I came to the UK, I studied mechanical engineering. And as you are speaking, I still practice my mechanical engineering, but I am also an artist. So I'm using both okay. sides of my brain and we should yeah. be very yeah. proud as an artist to showcase the art side of us. You know, the story yeah. of the artist being, let's say, a poor person is not anymore because internet has come in the way to help us sell our work and tell our story better. Aside that, you know, the internet has opened the gateway for us to showcase our work. You put one artwork on Facebook and the whole world sees it. Depends on where you show it. So I encourage all Africans to be very interested in the arts because that is how, as uh, Aluwali has said, Aluwali has said, that is how we actually, uh, we tell our story. There you go. And then Marek says, it's a very, very refreshing program. Well done, Eric and Wally. That's good. Yeah. And then my wife, Marie. Marie has been supporting us in the background. Marie says, Marie Kovigani, some of us too were thought to just study it as a subject till Form 3, where we chose our options.
but weren't really taught to appreciate the art. It took me very uh, many years to begin to see it. So yes, the time is now to organize more exhibitions. And in Ghana, we need more galleries and museums to aid us capture the and maintain our heritage through art. Galleries, galleries, galleries to further promote tourism. That is well true as well. As Africans, we should embrace our culture, embrace the role that artists play in society. And then Marek said, yes, Marie, you're right. To just do art is different from to appreciate art. And then I've got a friend of mine, Kwame Uusu Asabri, who says, great work. Well done, Oluwole. Well done. Yeah. Everyone is so happy with the work that you have shown. Patrick William Dodu, who is a very good artist from Ghana, I interviewed him last week, says, great. And he's appreciating what is going on as well. Now, he laughed at the fact that we can't be white. I mean, we are created as black. How can we go on and pick a different form? Yeah, yeah, we can't, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then Morel says, being cut off from our African rules caused us a lot of problem. Just look at yeah. African-American history. And that is true. Sure. Yeah. That is very, very true. Now, yeah. talking about that, in time past now, there's, there's, there's a comment from Patrick which I'd like to put on there. Pito would wish to host you in Ghana. Now, PITO is, stands for Painting in the Open, and it's Patrick's organization that he formed. They would like to host you, Oluwole, in Ghana. Wow. So definitely, wow. I'll put the both of you in touch so that you can okay. organize yourselves and do an exhibition. And I am more than happy to travel from the UK to come to Ghana so that we can hold this and tell our African story even better. So definitely, yes, kudos to all of you. And there's this going on at the moment where Black, Black Lives Matter has actually arisen so much. How do we use art to address socioeconomic problems? How do you use our art to, to actually speak to our politicians, speak to those who think they are higher power than the Blacks? How do we communicate? And I'm gonna display two artworks over there that you've done, I think it's right behind you as well, that you use to address this problem. So I'll put it on screen right now. This is so beautiful. Can you talk to us about it, please? Well, the, the, uh, this painting was uh, inspired by, you know, the story of uh, George Floyd. That's right. Know, that was killed by this uh, this police in U.S. some weeks, some weeks ago, or something. Yeah. Uh, you know, each each day, I, because I watched the video online, and mm. I could not help myself of it. Same here. I could not help myself. I keep, you know, keep imagining that what might has happened to the black. What happened? How did what we did get to this point? How did we get here? Yeah. How did it get here? And I keep, you know, asking myself this question. And I find it very difficult to, you know, to understand and interpret. And then I decided to, you know, create something. The title is Waiting for Justice. Waiting for Justice. We, the blacks, yeah, we, the blacks, are waiting for justice. We are waiting for what the America will do. Mm. This is not the right time for them to start giving us stories. Excuses, us no. All sorts of things. Enough is enough. That's they right. Stop killing us. We are not animals. Mm -hmm. We are not monkeys. We are not. This is the time we need to speak out. We need to use our hearts to speak mm. out as one as one African. This That's is right. The time we need to reject, you know, their ways of us. This is the time we need to speak together. We need to come together as one, as to. one Africa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this basically is talking about the the incident that, that happened uh, in U.S. and you know what we the blacks are expecting. We don't want any other thing. We only want justice. Justice, justice to be said. Must be done. They should stop killing us. Enough is enough. They should stop it. We are not animals. We That's are not. Right. We are not their dogs. No. You know? We are no. not, so God has, we, they should stop doing all this sort of rubbish. We are saying no to racism. That's it. This must that's it. stop. It must yeah. stop. So that's and this is very idea. well communicated in your message because as artists, we have the power to visually communicate. Now, some oh. people have got the power to say things. We have also got the power to show them visibly yes. what yes. they can do. And you have communicated this. Now, America is doing things that are wrong, 
the other parts of the world are also maltreating the blacks. And so this yes. message not only goes to America, but everywhere yes. all, in the world, the world where the yes. that's right, where the black race is being maltreated. As we said, yes. we are not animals. We are equally created in the image of God, and therefore yes. we have equal access to everything on this earth. Yes. And we are telling them to stop this racism. That is a very yes. good message. Very, very yeah. good message. And very well painted as well. Uh, you've yeah, got this well, lady they, in the they, middle. Do you, know, do you know that this painting, well, the, the first time I, I posted it, okay. immediately someone, someone bought, you know, bought this particular painting from me. He said he wants wow. to have it. You know, he said, I need to have this painting. I said, ah, and he said, okay, <laughs> let me have this. And <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And I like so the fact that, you know, you, you in the left-hand side, you are there painting, and you've got the yes. words, no to racism, written at your back. Yeah, you, what happened is that I, this the first one by the right is the original painting I painted. Okay. This second one is me standing in front of the painting. And ah. when I painted this first one, the person saw this image of this second one. He said, right. ah, I need to, you need to do something like this for me. I want to have it. And that was what brought to the painting as my background. And this okay. is the second one I'm working. Yeah, that's the second one I'm painting as my background. Yes. Wow. The first one is ready, and this is the second one I'm working on. You can see that my background. Yeah. That's can amazing. So this is work in progress. Yes. So the, the first one I have shown on the screen is a picture. Now no, I'm going to show me. you he, he's in the studio, yeah. and I'm going to let you actually see just him. And um, he is actually showing that. Let's go. I'm just going to show. Yeah, so this is the painting. This is my studio. Uh... This is now some of my paintings have been, you know, took I took some of them home. This is just my studio. Now, what are things? I've everything has been shifted. That's just my studio now for now. Thank you. That's really, really good. So basically, what um my my good friend is saying, Olu is saying is that we can use art to communicate, to address socioeconomic issues. Yep. So yep. if there are issues going on, yeah, violence, racism, whatever, mm -hmm. we can use our artwork to communicate. And this is what I urge all African artists to do. If in, in your region, let's say the government is not doing something, you can use art to address exactly. the problem. You can use your artwork to communicate. And we should actually be bold enough to go ahead and do that. And I also had a similar painting of George Floyd when, when you know, you were painting this, I was also doing my bit in the background, also painting mm -hmm. my bit, and I'm going to show it. You know, the painting in the middle that I'm showing right now yeah, is yeah, my yeah, rendition. Yeah. So yeah, I've got yeah. the American flag turned upside down, pe uh, depiction of the people who have been killed at the top, and people, the action of the actual um, murder mm -hmm. going on there. And I've listed all the names of those who have been killed so far in there as well. And the black the red in the American flag is actually flowing down from the people as blood. Yeah. So this is quite, I was, I was really angry. I was very angry and upset when I was doing this painting because as you said, it cannot keep going on. It must stop. Definitely, yes. So very well done for that painting. And um, I'm glad that it's sold as well. Mine has also been sold because it's wow. really important that we communicate this uh, message up there. Mm -hmm. I know time is far spent. But what are your social media handles if anybody wants to follow you? Okay, uh, at Oluwole Omofemi. And okay. also on IG at Oluwole Omofemi. There you go. And I've put it right on the screen right there. Oluwole Omofemi. Oluwole. Oluwole. Olu, uh, teach me how to Olu, pronounce Olu, it. Oluwole. Oluwole. That Olu, means Olu, God has entered my house. That's the meaning. God has God entered has, my has house. Entered. Oh, yeah. Olu, Olu, That's Olu, such a beautiful Olu, name. Yeah. 
Such a beautiful name. Olu Ole Omofebi means God. Olu Ole means God has entered my house. And then the yeah. surname is Omofebi. Omofebi means baby love me. <laughs> I like I like how Nigerians have a meaning to every name, which is great. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. So what are your last words that you would like to give everyone watching you to encourage them and also to let them pursue that which they, God has given them? Well, uh, my the last word I will give is, you know, uh, to always, like I said earlier, accept who you are. Mm. That's one of the most important things in life. If you don't accept who you are, you can't believe in yourself. Yes. Immediately you lost your identity. Everything is gone. That is very true. Yeah. So you need to accept who you are love yourself it's when that's you right. love yourself then you consider loving others that's very true when you love yourself you consider loving others too yes. but when you don't love yourself it brings hatred mm. it brings chaos yes it brings downfall that's right so my my advice is for the black community okay is to forget this idea yeah. of I want to be a white. I want to be a yeah. white. I want to act mm -hmm. like an evil. You yeah. can't act like a white man. You can't. You can't think like a white man. That's true. But the truth is that one of the truth is that, you know, God, the way God created black, yeah. we are more superior to them. Definitely. But because of, we forget who we are. We forget who we identity. are. Yes. And that's the problem we are having as a black. Now, come, come to think of it, yeah, the pyramids in Egypt are the black people that constructed the pyramid. Mm. And it shows how powerful we, we were back in the days, in, in mm. even before Christ. We, uh, we were able to construct such a monument that they can't even understand how we're constructed without computers. So mm. the superiority of the black person is very much true. We have a very high sense, but we need to, first of all, believe in who we are. And then we need to, number two, as you said, love ourselves. That's very true. Yeah. That is yeah. very, very true. So yeah. any last words before you go off? I think we you have shared so much wisdom. You have shared so much beautiful artworks. If anybody wants to purchase some of your artwork, they should go to, did you say Facebook? Olu Wale no, they, they, can, they can visit my Facebook or visit Signatures Art Gallery. Great. So yeah. Signatures yeah. Art Gallery, yeah. Gallery, Gallery is in, in London. London. London yeah. Okay. They can visit them, write them if they want to make any inquiry about my paintings or anything. So the best place to go is to visit the Signatures Art Gallery. Signature Art Gallery to purchase the artwork. Great. Thank you so, 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 so much for making yeah. time for us. And um, I don't think this will be the only first time that we speak or interview ourselves together. There'll be many more interviews coming where I'll share time with you again. So yeah. thank you so yeah. much this evening. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Great. So listeners, you have heard Oluwolu Omofemi, and I am so glad that he came this evening. Um, I'm just going to make sure that... Right. Thank you so much. And the show has almost come to an end. But my few words that I would like to encourage you with is that don't give up. As an artist, do not give up. Through all the challenges that you might face, through all the opposition that you might face as an, as an artist, especially as an African artist, do not give up. Do not give up. Just keep pursuing your, your talent. Share it with the world. The secret is start sharing the moment you create it. It doesn't matter whether it looks nice or not. Just share it, share it, share it. But I'd like all of you to do one thing for me before you go. Go to Facebook, go to Instagram, and go to YouTube. Follow me on Facebook, Eric Amwakwa Bwedu. Follow me on Instagram, Eric Amwakwa Bwedu. And, 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 and just subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure that you join us same time next week same time next week that is 4 p.m uk time where i'm going to bring another brilliant guest to just talk about their art which is specifically african art 
So God bless you all and have a nice weekend. God bless you.